Tonight on Kangen's News, we take a deeper look into the transit strike and its financial impact on bus drivers. Then we go into the vibes from the Good Karma Festival. And finally, we take a look at an organization that is promoting safer streets for everyone. Kangen's News starts now. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Kangen's News. Hello everyone and welcome to Kangen's News. I'm Jaden Johnson and here is the latest from the Kangen's Newsroom. A body of a person found shot to death on the side of the road in Canyon Country this past Monday has been identified as a 12-year-old boy, according to the Los Angeles County Medical Examiner. With more on this, we go live to Kangen's News reporter, Asia Haskin. Asia, tell us more. Thanks, Jaden. Monday morning, sheriff deputies responded to Sand Canyon Road, just south of Placerita Canyon Road, which is a pretty remote area for a person down call. Deputies discovered a minor with a gunshot wound on the side of the road. The fire department pronounced the victim dead at the scene. Officials say the investigation is still ongoing and are looking into whether the incident is gang related. Investigators are encouraging anyone with information to contact the department's Homicide Bureau at 323-890-5500. Asia Haskin reporting live for Canyons News. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Asia. Yesterday, the county sheriff's department the County Sheriff's Department released a statement regarding four former officers who have taken their lives within the past few days. Los Angeles Sheriff Robert Luna issued a statement via email yesterday. Two of the deputies were identified as Commander Darren Harris and, and Officer Greg Hovland. The names of the other two deputies have yet to be released. While a cause of death for Hovland is currently unknown, it was reported that Harris died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Each suicide is being in, in, investigated individually as they are currently being, it is currently believed to be unrelated. CSU students may see their classes disrupted soon as the union that covers professors and other faculty are nearing a strike. Members of the California Faculty Association stood in solidarity in Long Beach yesterday morning. The union is calling for better pay and safer conditions for faculty across the state's 23 campuses. Nearly all voting members from the union voted in favor of a strike last Monday. Faculty weren't the only ones making their voices heard. CSU students also rally in support of their professors. They are getting paid very, very little. We, make, we, need, we need to make sure these raises are more than inflation, at least 12 percent. And uh, we're here to support them. They're here to support us and make sure that we all get what we want because the CSU has the money for it. The picket, lines in front, the picket lines in front of major motion picture studios have come to an end. SAG-AFTRA has reached a deal to end their 118-day strike. According to SAG-AFTRA, negotiate, negotiators' a tentative agreement has been approved at the AMPTPS. That agreement will see the creation of historic protections for actors against the use of AI and a 7% pay increase. The deal came after the studios released that their last, their last best final offer on Monday. Full details will be available once SAG after his board of directors votes to ratify the deal. Once approved, the union said that the strike will officially end at 12.01 a.m. on Thursday. The Santa Clarita transit workers strike has reached the one month mark with no end in sight still leaving bus riders struggling to find an alternative transportation and students looking for different ways to get to class. As, as, workers, strike over, as workers strike over yearly pay increases, their unions claim MV Transportation is not negotiating in good faith and has asked cities to get involved. In an email, MV says that its goal to work through the issues with their employees it is working through the issue with their employees and the city as quickly as possible. According to city officials, local routes 1, 2, 5, 6, and 12 continue to be available with limited service. Also, according to city officials, MV Transportation is not getting paid during the strike, and the same can be said for striking bus drivers, an issue that, is, that for some is starting to hit home. Kangen's News reporter Xander Grable tells us more. You may have noticed the lack of blue Santa Clarita buses traveling around the city. 
you may have also noticed the growing protest on the corner of Constellation and Alta Vista Avenue. These people with picket signs are holding a strike in support of bus drivers. The biggest thing is fairness for all the drivers. I've been living here 18 years from Chicago, and when I got here, a couple of drivers helped me become where I am today. What we're really trying to achieve is making sure that every one of their families get treated fair. The drivers feel as if they aren't being treated correctly and are taking action into their own hands. So that's what we want to achieve, that this company understands that we are value. And we shouldn't be treated secondhand based on what you achieve with the city and all that. We have nothing to do. We don't negotiate that contract. These drivers are now a few weeks into the strike and more and more issues are starting to arise. Well, the long-term effects, <laughs> it's hurting a lot of families, you, her. See, look, my wife rides a commuter bus down here. My daughter rides a transit. My son takes 757. My mother-in-law rides a dollar ride. But what is affecting? Even my family, even though I'm a driver. So it affects the community as well as us. The driver's mission is very vital to their survival as prices for essentials continue to skyrocket. Every day, not only me, is a struggle for all of us. Every one of us is trying to live based on our little savings we have and other things that come about. And, you know, we thank God for all of that. But it's a struggle, no different than if you couldn't make it to school like you're doing now and you're going through that struggle. Or let's just say, you know, you come from a family that never had, and then now you really don't have, that's those struggles where those people who once have don't have. And so it's hard for all of us. As the strike enters its fifth week, we hope to see more change. Reporting for Canyons News, I'm Xander Grable. Next, we turn to Jeff Lozick with an in-depth in -depth look at some of the important news happening around the globe and in Santa Clarita Valley. So Jeff, tell us what's trending. Thank you, Jaden. Here's a look at the news you need to know. It has been just over one month since Hamas attacked Israel, killing 1,400 citizens and kidnapping 240 people. The siege set off in an armed conflict that has cost the lives of over 10,000 Palestinians, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. The somber milestone has been marked by continuing airstrikes from Israel as ground forces are making a deep push into Gaza's largest city, splitting it in half. While the Israeli war effort began with overwhelming support, it has faded in recent weeks as civilian death tolls have risen, with many, including President Joe Biden, asking for a pause in the military action, a request that was ignored by Israel as the fighting continues. Here in the U.S., elections were held yesterday in several swing states, with Democratic policy and candidates picking up some crucial wins. As Ohio voters enshrine abortion access and other forms of reproductive care into the state's constitution, Virginia Democrats won control of the state house and deep red Kentucky re-elected its Democratic governor, Andy Beshear, to a second term. Some political analysis see the off-year election results as a possible bellwether for the 2024 elections when the nation returns to the polls to vote with the presidency on the line. Looking locally, the Santa Cruz Valley's largest employer, Six Flags Magic Mountain, has made a very special merger this past week with Knott's Berry Farms' parent company, amusement park operator Cedar Fair. According to analysts, the shared companies are now worth $3.5 billion, combining operations across 17 states with over 27 amusement parks and 15 water parks. The deal is expected to be finalized in the first half of 2024, with the newly created company assuming the name Six Flags. And that's what's trending. I'm Jeff Lozick. For more stories in and around the Santa Clarita Valley, you can check us, check us, check us out at SantaCruitaNews.com. Now back to Jaden at the Canyon News Desk. If you love fruits and sweets, you'll love the farmer's market. However, there has lately been a pest that could easily end this event. Evan Avora takes us for a flight. The farmer's market here at College of the Canyons supplies many fruits and vegetables for every family. However, there is a small family that is uninvited amongst the crowd. This is the tiny evasive Tao fruit fly that originated from Asia, now responsible for the first ever quarantine of its kind in the Western Hemisphere. Out here in Stevenson Ranch, they are having their weekly farmer's market 
where their farmers are making sure that their produce is well protected. It's windy. The likelihood of uh, the fly coming around on a wind, real windy day is very unlikely, so we opted not to put the netting for today. And while these fruit flies are still a present threat out there in Stevenson Ranch, some farmers may think it's too risky to take their produce to the farmer's market. The customers, however, think otherwise. I've been shopping farmer's markets for 10 years now. The, uh, the, the quality of the produce is just better because it's not being shipped all over the place. Fresh produce and even fresher smiles are served here. But how could this fruit fly cause such a commotion? Well, these little pests have the chance to contaminate food with their bacteria and pathogens, making the very fruits people eat possibly dangerous. That's why this quarantine is in effect, to lower the risk of these flies traveling and spreading throughout California. In fact, such nesting grounds can also be found in hosting plants such as peppers, cucumbers, avocados, tomatoes, and much more. Because of this, the California Department of Food and Agriculture officials have asked not to move any fruits from their homes or trees and to make sure to double bag their trash. For Canes News, I'm Evan Avora. Once we return from the break, Julianne Lena will be taking over to give us a further look at local news and events. And here's what's ahead. We take a look at a new visual art exhibit here at COC. And then we go to the movies here on campus. Stay tuned. In a home fire, can your family safely escape in two minutes? I heard my oldest son holler for mommy and all I could see was smoke. The boys, we never really worked with them, I guess, on telling them what to do if there's a fire. We lost our child. We lost everything. Make sure you can safely escape a fire. Practice your two-minute drill. Test your smoke alarms monthly. Make your plan today. The future is yours. So let College of the Canyons help you get ready, reset, and go for it. Get ready for transfer, the workforce, or take your skills to the next level. Reset your career and get back to work quickly. Go to college for $46 per unit. Zero textbook costs class options and apply for your share of financial aid. With convenient class times, flexible on-campus or online options, and free tutoring, the future is yours at College of the Canyons. Visit canyons.edu slash schedule. Welcome back. I'm Julianne Lena, and here's the latest from the Canyons newsroom. With traffic fatalities increasing around Southern California, the one organization is using its wheels and feet to bring awareness for a change. Kenya's news reporter, Shalisa Curlfun, is here to tell us more. On the count of three, one, two, three, finish the ride! You may have seen them during warm-ups or gearing up their bikes. Last week, bikers and runners teamed up at the Finish the Ride and Finish the Run event, a movement that came from something greater. So finish the ride and finish the run is really the spirit of determination to overcome tragedy and to move on. Go! Have a great ride, ride safe! While finish the ride and finish the run may seem like a fundraising event for the organization, the event actually has a deeper meaning. It's an event that I started after my own tragedy. Um, when I was hit, pinned underneath a car, dragged nearly a quarter of a mile from the streets onto and down the five freeway at freeway speeds in 2013. Um, my right leg was ripped off in about 20 pounds of flesh in two minutes. And, and after that, I got back on the bicycle, but I also started to understand the issues of traffic violence and how deadly the roads are across Southern California for cyclists, for pedestrians, for drivers. Bikers and runners not only embark on runs and rides, but they also become advocates for awareness and change. I think events like this bring awareness. Two important things like Safer Roads are, are vital. If you think about it, if you raise enough awareness, that awareness can turn into action and you can save lives, even if it means by making streets safer. That is something that saves lives, which I think is honestly what it all comes down to. Members of the community can continue to come together for ongoing safe events, where it's not just a ride, but a movement. For Canyons News, I'm Shalisa Curlpun. Watching films are just one of the ways you can relax after a long week. Reporter Christopher Casey takes us behind a long-standing tradition for the cinema department here on campus. Hi there. Welcome. Come on in. Uh... When watching a film, it's usually a feature movie. 
but not when you come to Friday Night Films, as it is an event that showcases more independent films. For over 15 years, the cinema department here at COC has been able to show films that can have an interesting story attached with it. Over that span of time, many people have been coming to and watching these films, like 15-year event attendee Ruth Baker. You know, the kinds of films, the independent film, the foreign film, and also the discussion, the introduction, the history of the film, um, talking about things I would not know about. This event screening involved with two movies called Polite Society and Women Talking. These movies are carefully picked by the cinema department chair and associate professor, Max Keller. The series started because all we got in Valencia were mainstream Hollywood movies. We wanted to diversify that. We wanted to allow people to see the incredible range of films that the world produces. And that's why we show everything. If you're interested in watching some movies here at COC on a Friday evening, you could stop by Hasley Hall Room 101 and enjoy what it has to offer. The last two screenings for the fall term is on December 1st and the 8th, starting at 5.30 p.m. For Canyons News, I'm Christopher Casey. As the sun set in Canyon Country, all eyes looked up to the sky. Canyons News reporter Natalie Perez shows us the event that had the community all starting right. It was a night under the stars. College of the Canyons hosted its annual Star Party event at its Canyon Country campus for students and community members interested in STEM-related activities. Science today is a very diverse field with growing diversity all the time, and events like this are, help to, are designed to help improve that, to bring science to communities where it's been less popular, less visible, less known. And so events like this in communities where we serve, I mean, this, this is why, that's why I have this job. It's because I, that's why I want this job. The event, hosted at the Takeda Science and Lecture Center, featured information booths hosting different activities for attendees, telescopes pointed at the planet Jupiter, and an indoor planetarium. This activity peaks every 11 years when the sun's cycle reaches a period called solar maximum. Those attending also had the opportunity to hear about the history of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, from a guest astronomer. That's the main part of it. It's, it's, uh, space exploration is not the machines, it's the people who do it, and this is where it all starts. And this is a wonderful place to start, both to get people interested in it and both to, for people, for those students who are working on it, to get that experience of talking about what they're doing and really presenting all of the amazing things that they've done. Booths, like the Astronomy and Physics Club, got to showcase and demonstrate their own professional research. The stuff we're doing actually has impacts on, like, on the scientific community. We do research, essentially. We work with NASA. We, and not only that, we're, we learn to work in a team, take something, take something from scratch, and build it all the way up. For Canyons News, I'm Natalie Perez. COC instructors got the chance to display their art and express their inner workings at an art gallery here on campus. Reporter Anthony Riley has more. That noise you hear is not a brush to canvas. Rather, it is COC's art faculty talking about their art and the impact it has made on their lives. I started feeling like when I was looking in the viewfinder on the ground glass on the back of the camera, looking in these, these, these deep projections of wood, I almost felt like I was looking into my own mind and I started calling it dementia. Art has the ability to break barriers. It can be beautiful as well as provoking. It can be viewed by anyone heard by anyone and express any language. My language ability was not like a native speaker. So through making art, through non-verbal communication, I was able to express express in that sense. For Sydney Leung, these sculptures were a way to signify moments in her life as well as a sense of acceptance. Stages in my personal life, but a lot of them is about being playful and seeking the idea of belonging. Art can be made of many unique pieces. These rare segments can be viewed as a metaphor 
for life. So I use a lot of different materials, porcelain, silk, and tea. Uh, you can see that there's, there's like black sand in the work and there's uh, glass. Having all of this random material together, I am trying to talk about um, how certain things come together to create a sense of belonging. Some will see this piece as a board with random objects. But for Sydney, this piece of art expresses more about her emotions and loss of people than words ever could. Every time I move, I lose a lot of connection. And so I set up this place of worship or almost for mourning to talk about the idea of loss. For Canyons News, I'm Anthony Riley. Over the weekend, residents enjoyed music and good vibes at the Good Karma Music and Art Festival. Reporter Jaden Johnson has more. Harmony strikes a chord in Santa Clarita at the Good Karma Music and Arts Festival. Spreading positivity through the arts, locals cultivated at the SCV Aquatic Center last Saturday for a day of drinks, vendors, food, and most importantly, live music. The festival featured a handful of artists, one of which is musician and beatboxer Razel, who was happy to join in on the good vibes. I heard about the Good Karma Festival and just the charity work that we're doing, so they asked me would I come on board. I said absolutely, especially uh, supporting Hip Hop's 50th anniversary. You know, I felt it was only right. The festival was organized by a group of students with different disabilities, given the opportunity to plan the event alongside people in the industry. These students learned to produce on a professional level, cultivating an experience where they and the artists they chose the platform can show the community what they're capable of. This idea is something Razelle resonated with. You guys are dope, man. This is what we did in the park. This is what we did at house parties. Saying this is what we did when we had the little small speakers and just a boom box. You know, we just wanted to connect with the hood, you know, connect with the people in our community. See that hip hop make you want to break dance, you know what I'm saying? Related to Raheem from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, Razo grew up seeing the innovation of hip hop grow before his very eyes. Taking influence from his relative, Razo looked to create his own standing in the culture, which he does through his beatboxing. Just like Raheem before him, he continues to innovate hip hop culture. What you saw was evolution. We're talking about 40 years of evolution, like where the beatbox started to where the beatbox is now on a global scale. For Kenyans News, I'm Jaden Johnson. Well, that does it for this edition of Canyons News. Please stay tuned for our Cougar Sports Extra show with Canyons News reporter Eli Kern coming up next. Remember, you can catch us on the web at canyonsnews.com. You can also send us news tips and store ideas to our Twitter handle, News underscore C-O-C, and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. I'm Julianne Lena. Have a good night, everybody.